I, I guess I might be a minute or so late. You'll have to let me know. Hello, everybody. Let me get my laptop so I can check your comments out. Hope you can hear me, hope you can see me okay. I've got my microphone on for a change. So there we are, turn the volume off. Right, I can see Tracy's here, Marilyn vibes. Cool, thank you. Um, right, let's have a little look. Okay, I'm, I'm a minute late, if that, so yay me. <laughs> Um, right then, uh, so uh, if Tracy, are you the first comment? I think you are, yes. So Tracy says, just rushed here, well tapped my way here, you know what I mean, but early, yay. And Trill Bits here, how do you put all that thumbnail well, just well, you look stunning. Oh, thank you very much, Trill Bit. Uh, Rich Mitch is here, hey Rich, I was watching you earlier on um, last night's live stream, I think it was last night, with Eugene. I didn't see the whole thing, but. Um, we very much enjoyed your chat, got a bit into retro stuff, which was cool. Uh, Jimbo finally made a live, yay! Tony's here, hey Tony and Dion. Uh, hi Claire, loving the hair, thanks Dion. JC Russell's here, hey JC. How are we all doing? I've got a drink, uh, second and last drink of the evening is a vodka and diet coke in my little glass. Cheers, keeping it weak. I am actually having to go somewhere tomorrow. Um, getting up early, I've got a work thing. So actually leaving the house, I'm gonna have to put on some sort of outdoor attire. So it's all quite exciting. So yeah, no crazy uh, hijinks on this live stream. Um, John's here, hey John. What are we all wearing? What's our scent of the night or day or whatever? Jimbo says he looks so glamorous. Well, thank you very much, Jimbo. Um, I am wearing, well, let's start actually. I didn't advertise this, but I'm gonna show you something new. Some of you might have seen it on um, Instagram, but I wish I put this stuff, this stuff here. Uh, some of you might have seen it on Instagram, but if you didn't, I'm going to show it to you now. So this with this paw print on it, <laughs> we've got my mucky paw print on it. It says pure distance and you open it up like this. You have this authenticity uh, certificate, as I would call it, certificate. And let's not drop these. I've got some Ruby Kona going on here. I've got <laughs> A 60 mil bottle and a 17 mil travel size. I took advantage of their deal. Uh, so it's Ruby Kona. Pure, this is heavy, so I'm putting it down. It's really, really luxurious packaging. Like this is a padded, kind of like silky satin thing. Uh, very, very nice. I'll show you the bottles separate from the box. Let's pop that down there. So that is the 60 mil. It's extract to parfum. This one is 28% perfume. And the perfume is Cecile Zarokian. That is glass, although it looks kind of metallic. And this is my scent of the night. Mm, so happy, so happy to have this. And I'll show you the travel size. I don't know if these are refillable. If anyone knows the answer to that, I don't want to try and force this off if it's not, and then I break it. So um, if these are refillable, let me know. You would hope so, wouldn't you? But who knows? Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I've gently tried twisting it, but um, I'm too afraid to use any force. So let me know if you know, if you know the answer. But yeah, both of both the same perfume. There was a deal. Uh, the lovely Irma, who is basically the drug dealer at the school gates, who was the one who started everything by sending me a sample of Ruby Kona. And I, so I chose Opadu, but it was always my intention to just sell that on to try and recoup some of the cost. So. I have put that one on eBay. I did do a sneaky spray 
and it's a very pure floral like very very much it's i think it's a gardenia scent but to me opadu was kind of more like a lily tuberose type scent very much that kind of you know that kind of floral that just pure clean fresh natural smell very natural smelling floral and for me it was just too floral so when i like I like florals, but I like them to have something else about them as well. So whether it's vanillas or resins, incense, that kind of stuff. And this was very much for me, pure floral. So yeah, All right, let's have a little catch up with your comments. So John's wearing Monte Cristo by Mask Milano. And he did do a little post on that on Instagram. Uh, Tony says no jogging bottoms. I think that's uh, what Tony's wearing then is um, uh, boxers or Y fronts, tighty whities perhaps, Tony. Uh, Jimbo's wearing Misfit by Arquiste. Uh, Dion's wearing La Vie et Belle Entensement. Very, very nice. I like that. Tracy says, yay, your treasure. Boxes and certificates, such a lovely touch. Enjoyed it for my birthday a few years ago when I got pure white. Yeah, very nice. I need to try more now from the house, although maybe I don't. My bank account says no, don't. But um, I've tried a few from the earlier, the earlier stuff, I think, and nothing's been a love until this point. Drillbit says those travel sizes come in very handy. Yes, um, definitely. Uh, Tracy's not tried Rubicon. I don't think but we'll try it from Jovoy. Yeah it, it's it's really unusual because I didn't even like it that much when I tried it the first time. I didn't dislike it I just couldn't get my head around it. Then something happened the magic happened and the next time I tried it I became a bit obsessed. Uh, Scotty Bean is here. Hey Scott we're in Lorchestra's Queer Cora. And David's here, David May, David Day. He's currently David, but he likes to switch it up at the weekends. Uh, David says, good to be back, great to see you all. Love the hair, Claire, still love you, Jim Bob. Well, thank you very much, David. Tony's wearing tighty whities and for some reason can't stop myself spinning around the house. <laughs> um, Tracy, I think I sent you a pure white decant a couple of years ago. Maybe not a love for you. Yes, I think you did. And I, yeah, and it wasn't a love. It was, it was definitely really nice. Like obviously of quite a clean sort of floral musky scent, I think was, wasn't it? Um, I wonder if I've still got it. I'll have a look. I might've changed my mind. I definitely do change my mind. Right then, what else we got? Andreas is in the house. Hey, Andreas. Uh, let's have a little drink and then we're going to move on to, oh. actually I'm going to show you what else came with the Rubicona stuff because it's so nice. So they send you a little catalogue with all the fragrances. The watercolours are beautiful that go with the, um, so you get all the notes, information on all the different fragrances. It's really nice. but. Uh, what's even lovelier is a notebook that came with it and it's really beautiful there's um, watercolours in here it's so lovely I mean imagine like you want to sort of take that on holiday with you and make if you want to do a little bit of writing it's just beautiful I love it like look at that so nice so yeah that's really lovely but you know don't know about you, if you get a really nice notebook, you kind of don't want to write in it. Especially my writing, it's shocking, it's really not pretty. So, um, I mean, it'd be a shame not to use it, but at the same time, it's a shame to use it. But I love it anyway, so that was really nice. Fragrances to service <laughs> is in the house. <laughs> oh, Lily's here, hello, she says, hair looks fab, love that colour. Thank you very much, Lily. And Francis is here, going to grab a glass and sit outside and watch. Oh, how nice. Cheers, Francis. 
clink, clink, and to all of you, clink, clink, whatever you're drinking, water, coffee, beer, wine, whatever. Cheers to you all. Um, Tracy's wearing the Lang Lang Nosy B this evening. Very nice. Lily have the note have that with notebooks as well. Okay, yeah, so yeah, they're, they're too nice to use. <laughs> so it's a funny old thing, isn't it? Um, right, I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna sneeze. Oh, the microphone's there. I must be. Sorry about that. Right, uh, let's move on then. So I'm going to move this out to the way. Loving my pure distance. Special, special perfume. And then I've got some samples. I've got some extra samples over here that we might be able to do if there's time. But I'm going to stick to the ones that I've advertised. So we've got Sarah Baker, House of Sarah Baker. And she kindly uh, got in touch and asked if I wanted to try her new line. So I tried way back when, when sort of around the time, probably within sort of the first year or so that Sarah Baker launched, I tried her initial line. And I've tried a lot of them. I haven't tried all of them. And then Sarah got in touch. I think I put a comment on something on Instagram it was that it was far from, I think it's the far from the madding crowd so I think someone had reviewed it and I put a comment or it might have even been on Sarah's own it's I'm not sure but um it's a the Miguel Matos perfume and I, I just sort of put said something or other and then Sarah sent me a message and said do you want to try the new ones so of course I said yes thank you very much much appreciated had these a little while just haven't had the time to really explore them I have put most of them on skin here and there but I can't remember what's what I've got the notes already lined up on my laptop and I've even um, got some smelling strips here some very professional so I've decided to be even more sustainable than I already am so I'm already a very sustainable uh, reviewer however I've up the ante because not only do I chop up my own strips I now chop them up from used paper so you can see my writing there you can see how uh, attractive my writing is so these are <laughs> used bits of note paper <laughs> right then let's have a little look see herb is here hey herb thank you very much for the comment on my hair And Francis is wearing Dossier Oriental Cherry. Well, that sounds nice. Tony says Strawberry and Watermelon Tea from Wittards. Clink and cheers. Cheers, Tony. Um, uh, John Snow and Jimbo are speaking German, I believe. Gesundheit. Oh, does that, um, because I sneezed, does that mean sort of bless you or something? Or is it something else? Right, Lily says you sneeze twice in a row in in one culture. Someone is speaking on you with love. Well, I like the sound of that. I'll take that. Thank you very much. Uh, Scott says bless you once a wish, twice a kiss. <laughs> John says Lily, a sneeze is one eighth of an orgasm in the UK. I don't know what that says about you, John. <laughs> <laughs> Drillbit says we could all do with some good old loving. Yes, absolutely. So let's get sniffing because I'm not going to make this too long because I have to get up in the morning at quite an early time, about six, I think. And so we're just going to randomly pick one and I've got symmetry. So we're starting with symmetry and we'll go on there with that. So Sarah Baker is the creative director, founding owner, and um, all round glamorous, gorgeous woman. And she has different perfumers create different fragrances, and she credits the perfumer on her website. 
which I like. I love that. Um, I, but there is one of these is actually by Sarah Baker as the perfumer. And I think it's this one. So Symmetry, I'm pretty sure this is going to be the one that's actually by Sarah because I remember it. Let's have a look-see. Where's the information here? Here we go, right. Notes are bergamot, petit grain, neroli, orange blossom, amber, cypriol, musk, oud. Oh no, this one's by Chris Maurice. So this one's not <laughs> Sarah. I'm getting it wrong. Um, inspired by the cultural, cultural melting pot and fragrance hub of the ancient world with its bustling markets and port combines oud with the freshness of a cologne tradition. Okay. This one to me did instantly make me think of Isoe Super or one of those um, type sort of cedar slash pencil sharpening, musky clean, woodsy type scent. You can pick up the citrus fruitiness, but it's not like, it's not big. It's not like, whoa, there, there's citrus. It's not like that. It's there and it adds a freshness, but it's not like, um, uh, you know, like you've got fruit right in front of you. It's very, to me, it's very clean, musky and woodsy. Any oud I don't pick up on, there's certainly nothing skanky that I'm really getting from it. And I don't remember picking up anything skanky from it. But the good news is I don't smell that is a particular oud note that I recognise from certain fragrances that I cannot bear. And I, I think it's probably a synthetic oud. It's in oud bouquet, in rag bar, La taffa, um, 24 gold. If you know those fragrances, that oud, the oud note in those fragrances is intolerable to me. That's just a personal opinion because I know a lot of people really love those fragrances. So um, no shade, <laughs> these, are, these are my own opinions. Um, but I'm, I'm just saying, I don't get that from this, which I really appreciate. I could absolutely wear this with no qualms whatsoever. It's, it's clean, musky, woody. And it's, yeah, it's really nice. Kind of reminds me a little bit of a 4160, like a pared down 4160 Tuesdays fragrance. So if you think of the sexiest scent on the planet, but a slightly less sweet, it feels like it's that ballpark. If I was guessing the perfumer, I would have guessed Sarah McCartney for this one. But it is, it's nice, it's really nice. It's not as floral. It's not as floral as I might expect. There's orange blossom in here. I think it lends it a tiny hint of sweetness. I'm going to come back to that. So let's pop that down there for the moment. Because that is really nice. And it would be better if I could do all of these on skin, but there's not enough skin here, you know. Well, there's plenty of flesh and skin, but. Not that I can, not that I'm going to show you lot, me wobbly bits. Not unless you pay me quite a lot. Um, right, so let's have a little look at the comments so far. Let's just scroll up a bit. John says, well, I've never sneezed eight times in my life. <laughs> um, Uh, just thinking, John, if you sneeze eight times, do you have a real orgasm, says Tony. Uh, John says, uh, Sarah is bloody lovely. Um, Tony says, I now want to catch a cold, what, so you can sneeze eight times. Do you know what? You've got a wife, <laughs> Tony, so you really don't need to catch a cold. Um, Drillbit's asking if any other horsey people are watching. Any horsey people... Um, Speak now or forever hold your peace. Uh, uh, love the hair, Claire, says Mark. Hello, Mark, or Fossy Fragrance. Thank you very much, Mark. Right, we're going to move on then. We've got, what well, we've got, Bascule. B 
B-A-S-C-U-L-E, bascule. So let's do that, pop that down here. This one's fruity, let's have a look, look and see this one. Is, oh, this one's got a little bit of an animalic touch, I think, as well. So this is by Ashley Eden Kessler. We've got, oh, this is a horsey one drill bit, so that's kind of funny. This one, it says, horses, hay and leather, the sun-ripened notes of succulent fruit, woods and prominent green notes amidst a notable base of earthy tones and noble, noblesse oblige, equestrian. So we have grass, peach, bergamot, lily of the valley, hay, leather, vetiver, amber, musk, fir, tobacco, metal tack. Interesting. Yeah, I mean, this is really interesting. It definitely it smells fruity. It's fruity, it's quite natural, outdoorsy type scent. It's not, at the moment, it's not particularly metallic, which to me is a good thing. Although there is a, a twang, there's a slight twang, there's a slight twang. Mmm. It's clean, fresh, outdoorsy, natural. A little bit fruity, but there's more to it than that. It doesn't smell particularly leathery at the moment. I can see, I can understand tobacco. It doesn't smell really sweet, like um, it's, there's an amber note. I'm guessing that will come out a bit later, but it's not an amber fragrance. But there is... something like furry underneath, I guess. Maybe we're actually smelling the horse, but something grounding and a dirty wouldn't be quite the right word, but something grounding. Yeah, really outdoorsy, natural smelling, fresh. And I can smell the peach, but it's not that syrupy kind of squeechy peach, which I really don't like at all. Let's have a look at your comments. I just saw Amanda's here. Um, oh. She says, hello. Oh, are you smelling bascule? Yes, we've got bascule. Um, Jorbit says, no, silly, sure everyone knows by now I'm big time into horseback riding equestrian. Yes, we know that uh, drill bit. Um, Lily says maybe Tony is in the doghouse, uh, which is why he needs to catch a cold and sneeze eight times. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. John says, is there a touch of castorium? Um... I don't know if I would be able to pick that out, but it does feel like there is a touch of something slightly animalic, but nothing too um, pongy or nothing too pungent. Yeah. I feel like I can get the lever a little bit now, but it's not a really harsh lever, which is good. It's... Um, just almost soft and earthy at the same time. It's definitely got some greenery, greenery to it, which I guess is the grass note. It's kind of a fluffy-ish scent, not, not like so, really soft, but it's got a softish texture to it, like, like the feel of suede but very natural tones to it, greens and browns. Nothing like modern feminine marketed fragrances, for example, nothing sugary, nothing syrupy sweet. A bit like a Jo Malone outdoorsy kind, of, when they do the countryside limited edition type things, outdoorsy, soft and natural and outdoorsy. It's like a, a breeze of, you know, the, a, a breeze that gusts through the woodlands 
Um, but the, a bit more than that, because you've got the peach and the leather, and but it's all very soft and very much blended, all all soft and swirly and lovely. It's really nice. It's really good. Basquiole. Right. Andrea says it loves the smell of horses. We have got horse carriages for the tourists that I pass every day. Not um, not at the moment. I miss them. Oh, that's nice. Lovely. Um, Amanda saying hello to everyone, and Amanda loves Basquiat as well. Yeah, that's a really nice. Do you know what that kind of reminds me in a way of your uh, Chen Noir? That kind of like very natural, outdoorsy feel that um, Chen Noir has. Right, let's move on. What have we got next? Lucky Dip. Lucky Dip. Flame and Fortune. I wanted to, when I was looking up the notes just now, this is the one I wanted to revisit. I couldn't remember what it was like. But we're spraying it now. And we'll pop that down here. Yeah, this is nice. So this is a white floral. Is this, yeah, this is the one that's by Sarah herself. Okay. Um, notes of orange blossom, pink pepper, apricot, ginger, mandarin, petit grain, lily of the valley, iris, jasmine, tuberose, motor oil, burnt wood, labdanum, fire, and mezcal. I haven't heard of that. I don't know what that is. Sweet, sweet, just sneezed as well all over my chair. But that chair is covered in cat bogus, which is a problem. Isn't it, sweetie? She likes sneezing on my chair. Um, yeah, this, I mean, this is, this is a lot. <laughs> this has got a lot going on. I feel like there's things in here I recognise, um, sort of from other niche fragrances, not, um, not mass produced niche, but maybe from smaller indie brands. It's like, Again, I'm thinking a bit Sarah McCartney in the way it smells. Maybe it's reminding me a little bit of, um, is it called Drive? Is it Drive Them Wild? There's an orange blossom. It's a really nice orange blossom by Sarah McCartney. It's, it's reminding me a tiny bit of that. It's not the same at all because that, I think that was more sweet. This has a smoke. This actually has smoke, um, quite a smoky note. So we've got fire, motor oil, burnt wood. You really do get this smoky feel and this sweet floral accord. And you've got pink pepper and ginger, so you've got the heat that they bring. You can really feel, you can really feel the heat of those spices as well as the smoke. And I smell woods. And this sweet floral thing. So this is really interesting. I'd be curious to try this one on skin. I probably did at some point, but I've forgotten. So it says about flame and fortune. The literary tradition of pulp fiction as a fragrance. A bouquet of white flowers, spice and citrus, heated until it catches fire deep smoky notes in the dryness of the fragrant desert. Dramatic, yeah, it is a dramatic fragrance. It's a big, bold fragrance. Um, I don't know how, whether it performs in a big, bold way, but in terms of the notes. But it's not, uh, how do I put it? It, it still works, everything works. It's, it's even though they're unusual notes, it doesn't feel like anything's jarring and anything's not 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 um, blending together. It's I guess uh, it's almost like if you wanted. So let's think zoologist T Rex. That's a smoky floral explosion, a post 
upper clip. I'm not saying it. Pop a clip tip. <laughs> a pop a clips. A copper clips. I can't, I can't. I can't say it. Post a copper clip. No, I'm going to stop now. Um, you know what I'm trying to say. Uh, it's like um, that brief was given to Sarah and she's interpreted it in, a, in her own way. But you've still got smoke, explosions, sweet flowers. I think I can pick up on a little bit. I'm not sure if, if I can pick up on a bit of Ambroxin and maybe some ISOE as well. But it doesn't overtake. It's more about the flowers, the smoke and the heat, the like the heat, the fire from the ginger and the pink pepper. Not that I'm specifically smelling ginger and pink pepper. I wouldn't necessarily pick them out, but they, um, it's clear that's what's lending this heat. Really interesting, that one, really interesting. I didn't know Sarah actually made her own um, perfume, so that's really interesting, and that's, uh, yeah, f uh, quite a fascinating fragrance. So next, actually, let's quickly look at your comments. Barry's here, bazaar. He says, lovely hairdo, Claire. Thank you, Barry. Post-apocalyptic. See, if I look at the word, Lily, I can say it. post apocalyptic no, actually, apocalyptic. Apocalyptic. <laughs> it's best we leave that. End of the world. Thank you, John. Yes, end of the world. Um, flowers on fire. Yes, definitely, Amanda. Okie dokie. Right. This next one, we've got two left from Sarah Baker. So this one's called G Clef. G Clef. Before anyone else um, starts saying something else. G Clef. Right. Not G spot, not G string. Here we go. And I'll pop that over here. Have a little drink. Oh. Oh. Amanda, I'm in your neck of the woods tomorrow. Well, kind of. I'm in Horsham. I think that's not that far from you, is it? Uh, right then, G. Clef. Let's have a look. Where are we? Here we are. G. Clef. It's by Sarah Baker again. Okay, so there's two by Sarah Baker now. Jazz-inspired coastal citrus and woody notes of a complex fougere. Maybe Californian, maybe Mediterranean, maybe both. Bon vivant. Grapefruit, hedione, bergamot, lavender, calone. That's calone. Oak moss, cumarin, and amber. Yeah, this has um very much to me an aquatic feel. Not in a really um, I'm, I'm generally not a fan of aquatics. I don't mind an aquatic note if it's very, very small. <laughs> um, if it does, if it's not too much. This, this is totally giving me like by the seaside feel. Not in um, uh, you know, smelling the food that's been cooked by the seaside. Very much the actual sea and the sand and a bit of seaweed. trying to think can I smell grapefruit I think again the citrus is here on about um, doesn't feel like they're meant to be smelt like citruses if that makes sense I think they lend it just a bracing freshness so they're combined with that kind of sea sea air feel I think it's cologne. Cologne's the ingredient that's usually used or often used in an aquatic accord. Um, Amanda can elaborate on that, being a perfumer and all that. Um, the cologne, isn't cologne supposed to be a little bit melony and a little bit aquatic? And I totally get a real fresh, fresh sea air, bracing, ozone almost like really cold cold air 
and a, uh, something sweet in here, but not like a lavender or not a sugar. Maybe it's a hedione, which is sort of jasmine-esque, although it has more, um, it's not as dense and heady. Yeah, it could be that. I think this is 100% unisex. So even though it says, fouge, you know, it says the word fougere, it's, it's neither one nor the other in terms of what you might traditionally expect a fougere to be aimed at men. This is, this is definitely for anyone. It's not, it's not, it's not particularly flowery and it's not particularly, you know, masculine in terms of it being ultra green and woody. It's 100% um, in the middle, just very fresh. Interesting because it's, yeah, it's different. Do I pick up the lavender? Yeah, I think I do. Would I pick it up if I didn't know it was there? I'm not sure I would. So it's not super, super lavendery. I get a little bit of um, underbelly of uh, clean, soft woods. Yeah, really, really fresh, really nice, perfect summer fragrance. Spring, summer, warm spring day or any summer day. This is kind of perfect if you're looking for a, a a nice fresh aquatic that doesn't lean too Bleu de Chanel typical man um, man cologne um, freshy is it's definitely a niche freshy like it it's good it's not my style of fragrance but it's it's very nice and let's have a look and see. Let's have a uh, um, Amanda says pretty near hope the sun shines. Thank you. Yeah, that's um, a Horsham. Well, I'm going to be indoors pretty much most of the day, sadly. But hey ho. Picturing James Bond coming out the sea. Oh, very nice. <laughs> Um, so cologne is that aquatic um, material. Thank you very much, Amanda. Uh, Lisa's here. I just got home from work and I must be tired because I didn't even realise you were live until about 30 minutes ago. Hair looks lovely. Thank you, Lisa. Hey, Heather. <laughs> Tracy says, motive olfactive Mr. Ozzy's Mackay is my favourite sea holiday fragrance and this sounds good too. Yeah, it's really nice, Tracy. I think you'll like it. <laughs> right, so what have we got left? One more and we have Far From The Madden Crowd. So this, I think, is the Miguel Matos one. Let me just look it up and... No, that's fine, that's ready to go. <laughs> My lovely, lovely um, used strip. So here we go, Far From The Madding Crowd. This is by Miguel Matos. So, spray that. Notes of heliotrope, bergamot, pettigrain, eucalyptus, black cassis, myrtle, plum, jasmine, cedar, castorium musk, oak moss so quite a few notes there and it says warm as summer fresh as spring a romantic picnic in the countryside botanics deciduous fruits wild flowers and woods meadows willows and ponds so this is going to be another outdoorsy kind of fragrance i'm guessing it's going to have similar feel to bascule there's there's a grassiness about this, so there's no grass note listed. But if there was grass and hay listed, I would totally um, get that. It's got this almost warm hay. So if you took hay, fresh, fresh hay, you set it down and then you let the sun beat on it 
and then the scent of the moisture of the hay starts to rise up in the air. I kind of get that from this. I'm not picking up the heliotrope as yet, which would give it a sort of a sharpish almondy type thing, but I'm not getting that just yet. So we've got bergamot petit grain. Yeah, it does have like um it's a green, it's a green freshness. Yeah, there's eucalyptus as well, which is of course is fresh. But it's it is giving me grassy the combination I think of those as those things, a myrtle which I think is a herb, isn't it? A green herb. Black cassis. So cassis is black berry, isn't it? I always mix up my black berries and uh, black cherries. <laughs> Not black cherries. Um, blackberries is raspberries. Cassis. I think cassis is blackberries, isn't it? Anyhow, and with blackberries, I think it's blackberries. With blackberries, they can give a slightly sharp and sometimes even slightly urinous feel. And I don't think I get that here, but I do get a sharp tartness. So it's green, but it's moist. And I like that because I think I tend to not really like things that dry. And this definitely has a moistness. As I was describing the hay, it was, it was like the moisture of the hay coming up into the air. So, it, and it's got an earthiness to it. It's, it's very, very natural smelling. Very natural smelling. And uh, let's have a look at your comments. Uh, Tony says 40 knots is one of his favorite aquatics. John says it's very bloody nice, this one. Yeah. Very nice. Barry says animalic. Kelly says, far from the madding crowd is the one I can't decide if I love or hate and I've had it for months now. One day I'll decide. <laughs> Maybe it's one of those that you just have to have it on a certain kind of day. Yeah, I definitely want to properly test this one further on skin. Because it's, yeah, it's really natural. Like it's making me think of farms and fields, but not in a animal manure kind of way, not, not in a muck spreading kind of way, but it does have a little bit of an earthy nest, like um, dirt maybe, but not animal dirt. <laughs> yeah, there's just a hint of the fruitiness which is going to be the black cassis, the plum. A little bit of sweetness, but yeah, it's like, it's grass, it's, it's earth, it's hay, it's, it's fresh, it's outdoors. Put your wellies on, you go stomping through the fields. Really nice, sort of min mineral-ish in a way. You know, when the rain hits the earth, that lovely, there's something special, there's something magic when the rain hits the earth, like, especially if it's warm. That, again, that, I'm, I'm again picturing moisture rising in a, in a vapour and minera, minera, mineralic, <laughs> not post-apocalyptic, <laughs> mineralic. Mm. John says, I imagined lay in a, laying in a forest with this one. Yes, definitely. Black currant is cassis. Black currant is cassis. I do, I mix up my berries. <laughs> um, Jewelbit says, definitely will work for me then, John. <laughs> uh, Jewelbit imagines laying in a hay barn, maybe. Um, Lily says, anyone have fragrances that you love, but depending on some conditions, it's finicky on your skin. I don't know about that. I think more so it depends on my mood. Like sometimes I just, I've got fragrances I love, but I just don't feel like wearing them. And if I do accidentally put something on that I'm not in the mood to wear, it can be uh, a little bit grating. Sometimes you just know you need something sweet and sometimes you know you need something fresh and natural. Um, oh, Madeline's here. Hey, Madeline. 
Our vegan, vegan perfume. What's your Instagram again, Madeline? Vegan perfume girl, is that right? Uh, John says, I'm not a green lover, but this one was really lovely. I think, yeah, and I think that's because there's so many different facets to it. So it's not just um, all green, is it? It's like so many different, it's a bit vegetal, you know, it's a little bit vegetal, um, it's earthy, it's a tiny bit fruity. Oh, excuse me, <laughs> belching. Um, yeah, really, really nice, that one. So I think my favourites, we're going to go, let's quickly revisit them all. So we'll start with, which one was this? A Symmetry. I think Symmetry for me is nice, but it is a little bit sweet. It's like a sweetened woods. And maybe, a, I'm guessing it's an ISOE Super or, or a Timber Silk it's quite strong in here, I think. This is my opinion, my opinion only, not um, <laughs> not a fact. Um, but it does smell a little bit like an isoe super -y type scent. And so for that reason, it doesn't excite me uh, as much as the others, I think. So that's Symmetry. Um, next one is Bascule. So this has really changed. I think this one had the leather in, didn't it? It smells, is this the peach and leather one? It's kind of um, gone more in the direction of, but it's still very soft. If this is the peach and leather one, I should probably just check. I feel like it is. Um, yeah, so this is grass, peach, bergamot, lily, hay, leather, vetiver, amber, musk, fur, tobacco, metal tack. So this is the horsey one. And this has, I feel like it's gone a bit more leathery, but it's still not a harsh leather at all. It's very, very soft, more like a suede. Um, soft and fluffy. This one's really interesting. This one's not really green anymore, so I feel like that grassy note might have gone. And it's got a deeper, so you've got amber, you've got musk, you've got tobacco, so you've got a deeper base here. And yes, yeah, so this is in this is interesting, and it smells good. It's not my my style still, but I think it's really good. So that's Bascule. Next one is Flame and Fortunes. This one's the fascinating Flowers on Fire one. This is really this is definitely really interesting. Very smoky yet sweet and floral. This is almost like sweetened, like maybe there's some extra sweet note in here, like a, almost like the flowers have been sprinkled with a little bit of sugar as well. But I do detect a tiny bit of something like ambroxan, but it's not, it's not an overdose at all. It's just, it kind of like works with the, the, um, the woods and the smoke it works with that as, as an accord rather than it being over, like heavily overdosing everything and, and annoying me. It doesn't do that. Um, yeah. And it's almost got like, yeah, like a sweet, almost like a hint of a Play-Doh. So it's, it's very interesting, really interesting that one. So that's Flame and Fortune. I'd say that's probably the most interesting of, of them all just because it's quite wild. G clef. So this is now kind of green fresh, green fresh, lightly woodsy. Quite, uh, G clef, I can't remember what's in this one now. <laughs> um, where are we, G clef, here we go. Grapefruit, hedione, bergamot, lavender, cologne, oak moss, coumarin and amber. Yes, it's, it's not as aquatic as it opened up. It's almost like it's grounded now. It's, it's been grounded out a little bit. It's, it's come back to earth a little bit. So this fresh breeze was floating around in the air and now it's kind of like coming back to earth. So yeah, um, that one's kind of, it smells now more, more woodsy and green, I think. 
And then finally then the last one, which was uh, Far From The Madding Crowd. So that's only obviously been on the paper a little bit. It does smell like tomato leaf to me. Um, I don't think that's a note. No, um, it smells like when you step into a greenhouse and again, the humidity, this is really definitely, uh, I'm getting humidity for like, the moisture in the air, I'm really getting the humidity from this more than anything else. Humidity and then natural stuff. Um, so yeah, it's like stepping into a hot greenhouse. It's kind of like been baking in the sun and then you've got these tomato plants, you've got the green of the stems and the leaves plus uh, maybe some green tomatoes uh, still haven't ripened on, on the vines as yet. That's what I'm getting, it's a bit tomato plant, tomato leaf-ish, even though that's not a note listed. But that's how it smells to me, a tiny hinty, hint of fruitiness, green, earthy, very natural. It is, it is beautiful, it's really beautiful. So what's my favourite? I think it might be this one. If I was going to, yeah, if I was going to choose one to wear, I think I would choose this one. So uh, the Miguel, Mati Ma Miguel Matos one, Far From The Madding Crowd. Yeah, because it, it's, it's really multifaceted. It's, it's interesting, it's beautiful, it's natural. I mean, when I say it's natural, I mean, it smells natural. I don't know what mixture of materials are used. It just has that lovely natural scent to it. So that is all of the Sarah Bakers. Have you, I know some of you have tried them because John's commented, Amanda has. Has anyone else tried these fragrances? Have you got a favorite? What's your favorite if you've tried them from the Sarah Baker or if not this particular line, the previous ones? Let me know. Um, Amanda says, amazing wallpaper. Thank you, I love it. <laughs> Absolutely love it. Um, Vegan Perfume Girl, that's Madeline. If you're not following Madeline on Instagram, pop over and give her a little follow. Um, and Tracy didn't realize that Madeline was Vegan Perfume Girl. So there you go, you see? It's funny, isn't it? Because we, when we have different names in different places sometimes, you can find out that you didn't realize you knew someone in a different way. I like that. <laughs> Okay, Drillbit is up at five, so bless you all. Hope to speak soon. See you, Petal. Bye, Drillbit. Thanks for popping in. Uh, Madeline loves the smell of Play-Doh. Amanda says, the perfumer of Basquiel spent time with horses to figure out what materials to use to create the smell of horse. I think she nailed it. Oh, that's amazing. That's brilliant. I love that. Proper research there. Um... Okay, right, I'm going to have a little swig of my drink and then move on. So the next next thing we've got is the Belle Rebel one. Let me put that down there. So I've got a sample of Belle Rebel Stunned. Just dropped it. Belle Rebel Stunned. Which I know is a cannabis and candy floss scent which is kind of interesting, isn't it? Right, Amanda says, favorite, Basquiat for its success at hitting the brief. Flame and Fortune is something else very original. Definitely, yeah. Right, we're just opening this envelope. Here we go, right. So, uh, this was sent to me by Belle Rebel. And thank you to Belle Rebel for sending me the sample and let's give it a go. First sniff then, I've never tried this before. This is brand new from their, uh, from the brand. Belle Rebel are very much about uh, their transparency, their ethics, sustainability, all that kind of stuff. You know, not cruel, obviously they're cruelty free. Um, so go and have a look at their website and you can check out more about all of that. But they 
Uh, they'll talk about all the people that work for them. And they're very transparent about their costs and their pricing. It's, it's, it's kind of, um, I've never seen anything like it actually. It's like, it's quite amazing. Concept is, is amazing. So let's try this perfume. <laughs> um, smells a little bit familiar. What's it reminding me of? I wouldn't have initially said cannabis. It's definitely sweet though. It's reminding me of something. I'm thinking it might be a designer fragrance. I'm just trying to pinpoint what it might be. I'm sure it's not supposed to be um, smelling like anything. It's just sometimes a couple of notes in combination together can give you that, that feeling. It's, it's sugary, it's warm, it's a little bit spicy. Quite nice actually, I was expecting not to really, I mean, I, I don't really want to smell like cannabis. <laughs> um, and at the moment, it doesn't really, so that's good. I mean, it might get there. Right, notes, here we go. Labdanum, geranium, rose, cannabis, nutmeg, clove, oil, banum, myrrh, vanilla, carnation, cedarwood, vetiver, patchouli and musk. Right. What's it remind me of? You really get the spices. Um, it's not too sharp. Sometimes spices can be very sharp. This isn't like that. It's very, very rounded, very smooth. It's kind of musky. We have got musk in the listing, but I'm, most perfumes have musk anyway, whether they list them or not. But this has a really nice musk accord which I'm picking up straight away, clean, very clean musk. And I like that. I like the warm, sweet spices, clove and nutmeg, plus carnation is a, a spicy note. And you've got vanilla, and I can smell vanilla as well. It's a sweet vanilla. Um, so, more like your cupcakey type vanilla, probably vanillin. Correct me if I'm wrong, um, but it's quite a sweet, rich vanilla, like vanilla ice cream. At the moment, I'm not picking up on patchouli or labdanum. I think the rose is it's there, the rose, you've got rose and geranium. Geranium is kind of rosy anyway, and in a perfume, mixing them together, I think usually helps to elevate it smelling rosy rather than anything else. Yeah, it's nice, it's, it's a vanillic, spicy, musky scent. with that rose, but the rose isn't really that strong at the moment. I kind of want to put this one on my skin. I like this. Um, where can we go with this? We'll go on there. Right, let's go on skin. Here we go. Just a little bit, right. Let's have a little look at your comments. And Madeline says, definitely intrigued by this one. Yes. Um, it's, a, it's a bit alcohol, alcoholic still on my hand, so we give that another minute. Um, it is really nice, actually, and I really wasn't expecting to like this one. I didn't think I'd dislike it, but I just didn't think from the note listing I would like it. But I like the... I like the musk accord in here. I'm trying to think what it reminds is it smell it smells a little bit almondy, I think. What's it is it reminding me of I was thinking is it reminding me of hyp hypnotic poison? I'm not sure. Not exactly. I would say vanilla's the biggest 
noting this. It's a musky vanilla spicy scent, but very smooth, nothing too sharp, nothing too dry, nothing screechy. Maybe even something like Dior Addict. It's really nice. Let's try it off the skin now, see if that's... On my skin, it's spicier. And less sweet. And I think, yeah, the sweetness is, is less and I think I actually get the labdenum on, on my skin now. It's got um, sort of like a slightly earthiness. It's nice. I like it. It's re really good. It doesn't smell like cannabis to me. So um, whether that comes out later or, or whether it, it won't to me, I don't know. Um, how about the clove? Yeah, I think I'm getting more of the clove on my skin than I was on the paper, Heather. Um, so you do smell clove. And bearing in mind it's in combination with carnation, they often get put together because they work quite well together. So if you don't get on with clove, you probably don't want this. Some people associate clove with bad teeth because it used to be used, uh, clove oil was used as a sort of like a, I don't know if it was a pain relief or um, a anti, what's it called, bacterial thing. But clove was used on um, bad teeth for tooth pain, bad um, abscesses and things, I think. So if, you have that association with clove, you probably don't then enjoy it in a perfume. I don't think we did did that as kids, so it's not a problem for me. Clove, clove is a food smell from my scent memories. Um. Jim says, just went to their website, they have bespoke mushroom packaging, it's kind of cool. Yes, um, yeah, it's quite clever what they do with their packaging. I think it's, it's all biodegradable, so you could potentially just throw it out and it will eventually degrade, which is pretty uh, interesting stuff. There's lots going on in the world of uh, sustainability these days. <laughs> John says, I have no idea what cannabis would smell like. <laughs> Okay, Barry says cloves numb the skin, so used on sore gums and teeth. Okay, so cloves, clove is used for its numbing properties. Heather says my favourite gum is clove gum. Barry says I like the tangy feel given off by cloves. And Greggy Boy is in the house. Hey Greggy Boy. Yeah, you can, you can definitely smell the clove. Would I pick out nutmeg? M not sure. I would, if I was describing it and I didn't have the note listing, I would say the spice, there's a spice accord. It's warm, it's smooth. It's le blended lovely with the vanilla. I think vanilla and spices, because vanilla itself officially is a spice anyway. Um, cheers. I think vanilla and spices work really well together. And this particular spice accord is warm, it's slightly sweet, and it's very smooth. It's not very, it's not particularly hot, it's not particularly dry, it's not particularly sharp, very much a smooth spice blend. And combined with that vanilla and the musk, clean musk, really nice. Madeline says, Fern have mushroom packaging too, I think. I keep seeing them advertised on sort of Facebook and stuff. And I wasn't sure if they were one of those scammy type brands like Wish. I don't, I never really looked at them, but just because they, I keep seeing the adverts. So, you know, when, when I see a lot of adverts on social media platforms, I tend to assume the worst about them. I don't know if that, if, do you guys do the same thing? Right, I think I'm quite tired. I have to get up early for school. So, not school, um, a workshop. 
actually going somewhere for work. It's quite amazing. I'm going to have to wear clothes. I'm going to have to shower before I start. <laughs> Clean my teeth and all that. So um, I suppose I better go to bed. So I am going to end it now. Thank you all so much for joining me. Do appreciate it. And I will catch you all very, very soon. <laughs>